Hello, my creative friends. This is Melanie, Melanie April Art. And today I'm going to share with you how to paint this adorable little landscape painting. Um, I live in Southwest Florida, so this is perfect time of year to put lights in the palm trees. Actually, the truth is we leave them up all year around here. We really do. <laughs> so I want to share with you how to create this adorable little scene. And let me tell you first what materials I'm using. So I'm going to be painting on Arches 140 pound cold press paper. And the colors that I'm going to use are Cobalt, Cobalt Turquoise Light, that's by Windsor & Newton. I'm also using Rhodonite Genuine by Daniel Smith. And that's for our background, um, those two colors. So if you don't have either of these, feel free to substitute any of your blues, any of your pinks should work really well for this. And then once we paint the palm tree, I'm going to add in Mauve by Cotman, Windsor Newton Cotman, and I'll also be using some Green Gold by Daniel Smith. Once again, please feel free to substitute as you need. So let's get started painting. I have used washi tape to section off a 5 by 7 area that I'm going to be painting in. And I'm using just a ceramic plate for my cobalt and my rhodonite, which like I said, we're gonna use in the background. And whatever palette you use, you wanna make sure that it gives you plenty of space um, because we're gonna be doing some pretty wide sweeping motions. And you wanna make sure that you have enough space on your palette to really put enough water here to make this work for us, so just a little tip for you there. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm using a one inch brush and I'm going to wet the entire area of the background with just clean water. Today it's actually cold in Southwest Florida. Well, by cold, I mean like maybe 55, 60 degrees. And I have on this sweater and I'm seeing already that it's getting little, <laughs> it's shedding into my paper. So, oh well, I think it'll work. I think we'll be okay. So as you can see, I'm, I'm adding water to the background and what I'm trying to do is get the entire area wet, but I don't want it to be um, over wet. So I don't want any puddles. I want it to be consistent and I'm giving it just a minute too for the water to seep into the tooth of the paper. So once I have that done, I'm taking, this is maybe a 10. I actually, I may even go to a 12 here. Let me grab my 12. So I'm using a size 12. You, you definitely want to use a bigger brush. And I'm adding, you can see how much water I'm adding. I want this to be nice and juicy. So once I have added water to my paint here and I've got my paintbrush totally loaded up, I'm gonna move this up here because I'm gonna tilt my paper just a little. I'm starting at the corner and I'm gonna make these sweeping motions kind of in a diagonal and I'm gonna keep going until there's basically nothing left on the paintbrush. I'm going back into my water a little, back into my paint, loading up my paintbrush one more time. I'm gonna show you the palette. So loading it up one more time because I want this corner up here to be pretty intense in color. So I'm going to sweep in a little more intense color into that area and just sweep it down. I'm rinsing off my brush really, really well because now I'm going to go into my pink. So I'm gonna make sure I'm grabbing some with the corner of my brush and I'm gonna mix that up with the water really well this is a, this rhodonite is really intense pink. It's so pretty. 
And the main thing about this is you want to make sure that you've got it really, really mixed up well. You don't want any little pieces of paint floating around in there. So mix it up well. I've got my brush fully loaded and I'm going to do that same process, but going this way. So starting at the bottom, moving up, and this time I'm not worrying about tilting my paper. And I'm going right into that blue and you see what happens is it'll start to make this lovely shade of purple. So I'm rinsing off really well again because now I've got that purple shade on my brush and I want to start over with pure pink. So I'm grabbing a little more color into my puddle here. Make, make sure it's mixed up really well. Got my brush loaded, coming right back into this corner and just adding a little more intense pink. And this time I'm lifting my brush in between these strokes. So I stroke, I lifted it, coming back in and applying different amounts of pressure. So here I was just with the tip of my brush through here I pushed and it kind of makes these formations of clouds. If you vary the degree of your pressure on your brush, so I'm pushing and then I'll pull up to just the tip of my brush and pull it all the way through. So creating all these fun little shapes that will turn into these cloud formations in the back. So I think I'm gonna call mine done. The best part or the best thing to remember when you're doing backgrounds like this is you don't want to fiddle with it too much. You kind of want to get in there and then get out um, because the more you fiddle with it, <laughs> trust me, it can get, it can get a little hairy. <laughs> so do your background, put in some clouds and then let it rest. So I'm going to let everything dry and then we'll start working on the palm tree. Once the background is dried, now we can do a drawing of our palm tree. And this is pretty simple. So you can decide if you want your palm tree to come this way or this way. Um, I'm gonna go with this version. And if you look at this, if you pretend that this is in thirds, so the, the um, leaves of the palm tree are going to be up there in that upper third and your trunk is about two-thirds of the way so I'm gonna take my just this is just a regular pencil and that's the top of my palm tree and I'm just drawing a curved line and I'll come back up here and follow that line as I come down to the bottom it gets a little wider so that is the basic of drawing the bottom of our palm tree now up here all I'm going to do is lightly pencil in some lines where I want my palm fronds to happen So I'm just kind of fanning them out and they may not even necessarily turn out this way, but I just like to have kind of a plan in mind. So I'm just going to draw in some lines there to indicate where my palm fronds are going to be. Okay, that's it for our drawing. So now we can start painting the palm tree. Okay, so I've got all my colors here ready to go. This is my cobalt, rhodonite, I've got mauve, and I've got green gold here. We're going to start with the trunk first, and I've also dropped down to a smaller brush size since now I'm painting in a smaller area. I'm going to mix up a watery mixture of my mauve first. So I'm gonna go a little light here and using that mauve to create a wet surface on my trunk.
So once I have the, the trunk wet and filled in with that mauve color, now I'm going to start introducing some other colors right into the trunk. And you can see how watery and light I'm going, so not too intense with your color. And the way that I'm introducing these colors, I put them on my brush and drop them right into the wet surface. So I've put in some cobalt blue. Now I'm going to add some of the rhodonite. And some of that rhodonite I will add right on top of the cobalt. So it gives it a little darker purple. And especially here at the bottom to kind of anchor it, making it a, just slightly darker down here at the bottom. And in between your colors, you wanna make sure you rinse off your brush really well. Now I might add, I think I'm going to go ahead and add some of this green gold into my trunk. Just be wary if you're using this color, it is, it will take over the world. <laughs> so you just wanna use a little bit at the time It's a, an exploding color. It really can take over your painting. It's such a gorgeous color though. And I think I'll add a little more cobalt right on top of that green. All right, that's looking good to me. So some different things that I've done, as you can see, I've done a few versions of this painting. Um, this one, I added salt right to the trunk. So if you have salt handy, I'm gonna grab a little here. You can just sprinkle a little salt right into your trunk and just let that dry and see what happens. Um, on this one, we're, I rubbed off some of the paint once it dried, which is the same technique that we're, we're going to apply to the lights. Um, so it's really up to you. Just kind of play around with your trunks and see how you like them best. So now we can get started on the palm fronds. And I am going to start with my cobalt blue. Once again, I'm going fairly light in my color, but this is still watery. So I'm gonna start on this side and I'm going right over that line that I drew. And then I'll take my brush and just uh, flick it sort of. So very light pressure, allowing those palm fronds to look like they're dancing in the wind. And while it's still wet, I start adding other colors, just like I did in the trunk. And you want the color to be more intense here in the center. So as we go around and continue to add palm fronds, I'm always gonna be adding more colors right into this central location because once it dries and we add our, our little fairy lights, we wanna make sure that we've got some darkness so that, that those white lights can play off of the dark areas. And once again, the green gold adds such a beautiful effect, but we don't want it to take over the world. So be careful with your green gold. This time I'm going to start with mauve for my second palm frond here. So you can really experiment starting with the different colors, mixing, and as you're doing your palm fronds, they are going to mix in with each other. So it gives it a really realistic look.
Okay, so once you have filled in the top of your palm tree, we're going to let everything dry so we can add our lights. Once everything is completely dry, you can rub off the salt. If you use salt, you can just rub your finger right over and brush off the salt from your trunk. And every once in a while, most of these variations that I've painted, I like to come back at this point and make my trunk just a little warmer in tone than the top and so all I'm doing is taking a very very light wash of burnt umber um, mine is by Winsor Newton but and even if you have like a golden color like a quinacridone gold just something slightly warmer in tone and as you can see I'm all I'm doing is taking that watery color and brushing it right over the trunk. I just like the way it looks. It makes it a little warmer, stand out from the rest. So that's all I'm going to do for that. Now to add the lights, I have got a flat, very small flat brush that I have abused to the point of, <laughs> it's, it's a funny looking little brush now, but it works perfect for what we're about to do. So we're gonna scrub out some of the color up here in the palm fronds to create that glow around the light. So all I'm doing is taking, um, dipping water right onto my brush head here, and then I will go in a circular motion. You really don't have to do it very hard or very much. Um, then I'm gonna take a paper towel and dab right on top of the circle. And you can repeat this process wherever you would like your little fairy lights to be glowing. So once you have all the glow that you would like to have in your palm tree, uh, you want to make sure that the area is dry before we start adding the white light part of it. So I have used, in the past, I've used gel pens, I've used Posca paint pens, white acrylic ink, white gouache. Um, today I'm going to be using this white ink by Kuretake. Um, so basically anything white that you have, even white acrylic paint would work fine for this because basically all we're going to be doing um, are small little dots of light. So I'm going to open my ink. I'm going to take my very tiny brush and dip it right into my ink. This stuff is pretty thick. And right in the middle of those glowy areas, I'm just going to dot in some of my white ink. And I'm also going to add some smaller lights here and there that don't have the glow effect around them. But just little twinkle lights in my palm tree. Okay, once you've got your lights where you would like them to be, the final, final step for this is to add that, if 
you can see the string part of the lights. So it's like you've got the string lights in the tree. It's kind of cute. So for this, I'm going to grab my pencil again and I'm going to pencil in some of these lines and I want some of them to go behind some of the fronds. So when I paint them, I'll paint some in front and some behind. Just gives it that kind of realistic effect. And you don't have to really worry about, you know, <laughs> where these are necessarily. We're not trying to make it, you know, like perfect, like it really would be. <laughs> Just trying to give it the effect of having strings. Okay, so once I've got my strings in, I'm going to use my mauve, my tiny brush, and paint right over those pencil lines. And like I said, some of them I will put in front of the palm fronds and some of them will go behind. And voila, we are pretty much done. So once your strings have dried, you can come back with an eraser and just erase any pencil lines that you don't want if you have pencil lines left. And of course, the final, final step of is the most fun to take off your tape. One more final tip I almost forgot. So as you can see in this version, the lights look like they're colored. It's really simple to do. So once it's dry, everything's dry, I can take my tiny brush, grab just a tad bit of color, whatever color I want, and I'm going to put it right around that glowy section and Sometimes I'll take my paper towel and dab it a little bit. We don't want it to be too, too colorful or, or kind of take over the glow effect. Here I'm grabbing a little yellow. So you, I'm doing yellow and pink on this one. You can add colors as you would like. Just make sure you go really light with the color. Okay, so we're all done with our adorable little palm tree. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you give it a try, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram. I'm over there at Melanie April Art. That's my name. <laughs> I'm also at MelanieAprilArt.com. And if you enjoyed this, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up, pass it along, forward it along to someone else that might enjoy it. And I have online watercolor classes. If you would like to spend more time with watercolor, my classes are a great place to start. I hope you'll check them out. Thanks so much for being here, and I can't wait to see what you create.